Topless Nile virus is a flavivirus, and it's an arbovirus, which means it's spread by insects. And the insects that primarily spread West Nile virus are mosquitoes. And the type of mosquito varies based on the area of the United States or even the region within the world. So we can have horses that are infected that remain clinically normal to horses that get severe neurologic signs. So the main signs are neurologic signs. And so the most severe cases can actually become wobbly, uh, go down onto the ground and be unable to get up. They'll thrash around, but they're not able to stand. Uh, lesser neurologic signs would be muscle fasciculation, so it looks like their muscles are jello and, and uh, vibrating, if you will. Um, they can get twitching around the head and neck. They can appear weak. Uh, some owners actually were concerned and felt they observed behavioral changes. So horses that were normally docile might be a bit more anxious, or anxious horses might be uh, appearing more docile or sleepy. So other types of animals are affected by West Nile virus. Those that become clinical are primarily humans and horses. But the disease has been documented in other types of animals, including small animals. I believe there was documentation in squirrels uh, during the peak of the West Nile virus coming across the United States. Uh, even some ruminants, but it's much less common for those animals to develop clinical signs of disease compared to humans and horses. Uh, also, birds uh, can develop clinical disease and even die. There's no evidence that horses can transmit West Nile virus to mosquitoes. They do develop virus in their blood, but it's at a low enough level that uh, it isn't infective to mosquitoes as far as we know. There, it's important uh, when veterinarians are doing necropsies on horses to take precautions with the CNS tissue. I don't believe there's been a documented case of West Nile going to a person from doing a necropsy, but because of some of the differential uh, diseases for West Nile, it's important to take uh, precautions and there's no risk from handling the horse that's affected um, in haltering them or assisting them that we're aware of. So the main diseases that would be uh, differentiated or need to be differentiated from West Nile virus are those that cause neurologic disease in horses. So equine herpes virus one can cause a neurologic form. Um, it's called equine herpes myeloencephalopathy. So that would be a differential for acute onset of neurologic disease. That disease tends to cluster a bit more than West Nile, where the West Nile cases may be more dispersed. Uh, herpes may, because it's contagious between horses, may be more clustered, so multiple horses affected. Uh, rabies is a differential, and also Eastern or Western equine encephalitis. We haven't seen uh, Western equine encephalitis in the United States in horses for quite some time, but we still see Eastern equine encephalitis. Uh, also intoxications, uh, poisonings of various kinds can cause neurologic disease uh, in horses. And then end-stage organ failure, so liver and kidney disease can have a final stage where the animal appears neurologic and so those would be differentials as well. The treatment for West Nile virus in horses is primarily symptomatic. Uh, there has been an antibody product on the market, so if it's suspected to be West Nile virus, you can give preformed antibodies to the horse. Beyond that, there's not a specific treatment, it's primarily supportive. And for horses that have severe disease who become recumbent, uh, trying to keep them comfortable while they're uh, recumbent and or putting them in a sling to get them standing again uh, could potentially improve their likelihood of survival, but it's primarily symptomatic treatment. Across various studies, the case fatality rate for horses with West Nile virus is about 30 to 35 percent. Uh, some studies it's ranged as high as 40 percent. And this is primarily in horses that are not vaccinated against the disease. So most of the studies were done when the vaccine wasn't available or just coming onto the, to the market. 
Uh, I think the other important fact is that horses that recover from West Nile may not completely recover. In one study, I believe up to 40% of the horses had residual clinical signs. And if those are neurologic signs, since we ride horses and need them to be safe, it's very concerning that even if the horse survives, there could be residual clinical signs in some horses. It can be diagnosed uh, while the horse is still alive by a blood test. And uh, we usually are running a specific blood test that we see the antibody from disease, but usually not from vaccination because we may not know the vaccination of the horse or it may be partially vaccinated. Um, so there's a neutralizing antibody test and we can see that uh, increase with both uh, disease and vaccination, but primarily we're using what's called an IgM ELISA test because that's typically only gonna be elevated if the horse has been exposed to the uh, wild type of the virus and therefore affected by the disease. And, and then if the horse succumbs, uh, there can be post-mortem done to try to definitively diagnose the infection as well. The most effective means of preventing West Nile virus in horses is vaccination. And vaccination prior to the mosquito season or in areas where there's mosquitoes year-round, being sure the horse is immunized throughout that uh, vector season. Um, it's very difficult to predict when a horse might be exposed to West Nile virus. The virus cycles over various years and it's been identified in all of the U.S. states. So the West Nile virus vaccine is considered core by the American Association of Equine Practitioners, meaning uh, every horse, uh, is, there's an indication to vaccinate them to protect them because we can't eliminate the risk of exposure. Even if we do mosquito mitigation, there's still a risk of exposure to an infected mosquito. And because of the case fatality rate and the fact that the vaccine is quite safe and effective, uh, it's considered one of the core vaccines.